In 1910, Nathaniel Lloyd and his wife Daisy were seeking a house to restore and fashion to their own tastes. They found Dixter, a timber and brick farmhouse dating back to the 15th century, and Nathaniel Lloyd chose the experienced arts and crafts architect Edwin Lutyens to help him achieve his dreams, joining together the farmhouse, a 16th century yeoman's hall bought from Kent and a modern wing sympathetically designed using the same materials, roofscape and windows. The whole house, old and new, has an extraordinary unity. This is Great Dixter. The waiting hall is the meeting point which joins the three parts of the house. The medieval part, the yeoman's hall and the luchin's wing. It is here that guests waited to be received. Luchin's designed it to be fully practical. The pantries and kitchen face north so that they would remain cool. There are old-fashioned larders with marble surfaces and zinc grills to the outside. The kitchen, designed by Lutyens to the last detail, from the table to the pot stands, is intact. There is a typical deep Lutyens windowsill so fruit could be ripened here. I think everything that was produced in the garden was used in the house. So she canned a lot of vegetables, she bottled a lot of vegetables, they made jam and, and they used whatever was available. Uh, because of the wars they knew how to get the most out of a vegetable garden. The range is the original one and continued to be used into the 1950s. The Lloyds bought this Austrian 18th century dresser specifically for this spot. Lutyens designed the other dresser the children ate upstairs at night, but lunches they all ate as a family in the Great Hall. But when he was very well behaved, he was allowed to eat in with the servants at lunchtime. Um, and he loved it, um, all the singing and fun. But in the, the Great Hall, it was much more formal. The table and chairs were designed for Christopher Lloyd by Rupert Williamson to fit this space. Between the kitchen and the pantry, we have the servants' belt and the green baize door to the inner hall. Lutyens used a very arts and crafts style here, plain, honest oak panelling rather than mock Tudor which was frequently used at the time. The staircase was not Lutyens' first design. Nathaniel Lloyd was inspired by a 17th century lattice staircase he saw at a friend's house in Kent and asked Lutyens to incorporate something similar at Dixter. This design gives a very spacious feel and brings more light into the room. The Lloyds had six children, and this was a feature they loved. They had lots of fun racing to see who could get to the top of the house first without touching the stairs by climbing the lattice. It was very much a family house. The house was finished in 1912 and featured in country life in 1913. During World War I, Dixter became a hospital, so no further work was undertaken until the 1920s when these red stencils were added by Nathaniel. Nathaniel Lloyd and Lutyens found this 16th century hall in Benenden, where it was about to be demolished. They transported it to Great Dixter, where it was reconstructed. Lutyens put a fireplace on the side using a timber crossbeam from Elizabethan Dixter and made a feature of a block window. This room was used as a bedroom until World War II. Lutyens designed the bed which was originally here, based on a typical Renaissance bed from Florence. It was a huge architectural piece of furniture. In World War II the house was used for evacuees who lived in the Great Hall. The Yeoman's Hall has been a sitting room ever since. The house has been continually occupied and the Lloyds rarely threw anything away. This is an Edwardian medicine cupboard, complete with poisons and all kinds of tinctures. Many of the details of the Great Dixter are copied from local examples of ironwork or woodwork, which Nathaniel Lloyd was very interested in. Christopher was the youngest, as you know. He was born in 1921. And then next to him was Letitia, his only sister. Then slowly up the ladder was uh, Quentin and Patrick and Oliver, and then of course Selwyn, who was the oldest one. Generally gaps are about two years between each of them. The children would play in the day nursery attended by their nursemaid. This crawling window is another example of Lutyens' thoughtfulness as an architect. He believed that even babies should be able to look out into the garden, 
instead of only seeing the sky. Daisy Lloyd would sit here to do her needlepoint because the light was good. She was a skilled needlewoman and examples of her embroidery can be seen all over the house. She encouraged all her children, sons as well as daughters, to join her. The night nursery was Christopher's room as a child, which he shared with his brother Quentin. This bedroom is part of the medieval yeoman's hall house. It's got a wonderful view down onto the long border. The north bedroom was the principal guest room and features a built-in dressing table designed by Lutchens with radiator included. At Dixter, the Lloyds often hid their radiators with an old oak chest. The beam above the fireplace is from 1595, from the other side of the house. This is the room in which Christopher Lloyd was born. This passage by Lutchens joins the newer part back to the main original 15th century house. Although this porch bedroom is small, it's actually quite grand because of its queen post roof. It was not usual in the 15th century to have such a fine bedroom over the entrance porch at the lower end of the hall. The portrait of Henry Cromwell relates to Daisy's family tree. Daisy Lloyd Nee Field was very proud of being a descendant of Oliver Cromwell. Originally a guest bedroom, this became Daisy's bedroom until she died. It was then used by Christopher Lloyd until his death in 2006. There are stunning views from here to the garden and to the rest of the house. Lutchens created a masterpiece not only in the building but also in his design of the gardens. And now you will enter these gardens to see how they have been lavishly planted in the true Christopher Lloyd style.